My friend Phoenix came up with the idea to make a course platform. We made a simple MVP and I speed ran the API to see how much I could do in a week. And I'll explain how all this works as well. Now, I have a confession to make. I, I hate JavaScript. JavaScript, we all know that, but I decided to use JavaScript for the backend. One, because I really like suffering, and number two, because, well, it's going to be quite fast to make if we do it in JavaScript. Now, usually for a backend, I would use Express.js, but this time I decided to use Nest.js, not to be confused with Next.js, as this would mean that I could get the backend done very quickly, as it has a lot of features already for me. So, I read a little bit of the docs for once for Nest.js, and I got started on the authentication system. Okay, let's uh, look at the documentation and see... Uh, how Nest.js is. It looks more complicated, obviously, than Express, but it might make our lives a lot easier in the future. That's probably the first page of documentation I've ever read in my life. That is great. What is a create cat DTO? Exception filters. This is probably like error handling and stuff. Now if we try and post to this route, it should give us... Uh, yeah, it gives us a status code. That's really nice, actually. <laughs> but middleware, by its nature, is dumb. <laughs> so we have to get the uh, config service manually, which isn't I'm not a fan of, but like so far, this has provided a lot of useful stuff. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Maybe I am just being stupid, though, so. And this is the problem, right? Is that if we don't describe our errors, we have to though, then go in and find which error it's referring to. I should probably like read the documentation before actually doing things, because then I know where I'm at. Look at how many files there are just for a basic auth system. Like, it's less code, but it's just more confusing to my brain. Okay, so what I already had done is figure out a Prisma schema. It's a medium-sized schema. Hopefully, this will compile with the CLI. I'm hoping we don't get any random errors out of nowhere, so... This is why I like Prisma, right? If I wasn't using Prisma, I'd have to write all of this by hand. That one didn't age quite so well. Okay, so in theory, this should now create and delete users. So we should be able to, yeah. And then we get our full user. We're able to have a login system really quickly, really easily, which I think is really cool. Last time I did a terrible job of explaining authentication. So here's my second shot. When a user logs in inside the web browser, we need a way to check if the user is who they say they are. We could store the username and password in local storage, but storing someone's password on a disk without encryption is a very bad idea. I chose to use JSON Web Token to hash the user ID instead of storing the password. This means that the token can only be verified on the server with a JWT secret, allowing users to be authorized more securely. If you've been on the internet at all in the last few months, you probably heard about the Twitter rate limiting thing with bots, and we needed to implement our own mechanisms to prevent bots as well, because these are becoming quite a big problem. The first thing I did was add email verification, making it harder for bots to access the website. And I'm just going to grab this token. This token's just going to be what we need to verify the email. Uh, and now we do a get request to user slash profile. It should say that our email is in fact verified. I also added a rate limiter, which would stop bots from spamming the sign up and email resend forms. We can make up to five requests in five minutes and make another one, then it'll give us okay, an exception. That's great. That's, that works really nicely. In rare cases, bots could still bypass these, so the client side should also include a capture and a honeypot. When a bot is crawling a website, it automatically fills in all the input forms it can find and submits it. To detect bots, we should add an invisible input that the bot would fill in. If that input is filled in, then we know the client is a bot and we can deny the request, because obviously, if it's a human, they won't see that input. Next, I added passport resets, and after that, I needed to consider how I would add courses to the database. As this was a minimal viable product, I didn't want to create a courses dashboard, so I decided to make a CLI instead, and I decided to do it in Rust. Yay, Rust. The way this would work is that when a refresh command is called, it would read the directory with all the courses on it and add them to the database. Ah, why doesn't this work? Name another. Module name test. I think that worked. Yes! It's there! Okay, now we need to check the actual ordering works. Uh, shit, okay. Module test does not exist, how? We're now able to use selections. So if I want to create a module now, it will give me a list of the available courses. But you can see the categories we've got here as well. We can make a project. We can say which category it's for. In this case, I'll make it for another. Uh, we can give it whatever name we want. And then we can make it the last item inside category another. So yeah, you see our item is in the last one here. It's a bit confusing because of all the stupid names I gave to get this to work, but it's working now, which is great. We're finally getting somewhere now, because I was really worried that I just couldn't get this working today. Okay, so we're going to implement the database for this system. We'll be able to refresh the commands, and then it will refresh based on the contents of the courses folder. I'm glad that I got these Prisma queries working, because these are messy. These are really messy. Uh, look at this shit. Look at this absolute shit. 
Alright, time for the rust trauma. And we do have an object, which is really good. And this now works. I'll demonstrate this to you. So we got our TypeScript course. Let's create a category. We can create a module for this. And we'll call this module variables. And then we can do refresh courses, which are, at the moment only does one course. And oh, we do need to update it, uh, which is my mistake. So this needs to be null and I will fix all this. Refresh courses and it will refresh the course. And now if you look in the database, we have the course. We have the course category, which is just uh, introduction. We get the number and it also adds the modules we have and everything like that. And you'll see that inside here. There are a lot of bugs and to be honest, the entire thing was a mess and I shouldn't have rusted it. Rust it? <laughs> that's, that's actually quite a funny pun. I shouldn't have rushed it, and I shouldn't have chosen Rust because, well, you can't really rust, 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 rush, rush. I need to stop fucking up these scripts. Sorry that I didn't get much done in the last two weeks, but uh, writing Rust code is hard. But yeah, let me know what you'd like to see in the next video, and I'll see you soon. That was cringe. I'm not. I'm not the finger guns. Pew pew.